Okay, welcome back to End Time Prophet Judge, part number 66, as we're continuing to go through Passover, Pesach, the seasonal festivals. I know we had talked about the uh, what is on the Seder plate, but I'd like to speak of them. And I listed them up here. Uh, we have Pesach on the first uh, day here, as we did here, is Zeroah, which is the lamb. The matzah, okay, as we know, is the uh, unleavened bread. Okay. Now, there's three festivals that we work in here, and uh, if you have it here, Hal HaBikudim. Now, that's the festival of first fruits. You won't see that necessarily in the book of of, uh, of Exodus, but you will see it in the book of Leviticus. So in the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verses 1 through 8, that runs in line with Leviticus, chapter 23, verse 6, the Passover. Okay? Uh, and the book of Exodus, chapter 12, verses 8 through 15, again, it deals with the, the festival of unleavened bread. And, and uh, I'd like to bring you to remembrance that starting next, okay, next Wednesday is the 8th. Okay, so the late day before, get all the hamets or anything in your house with leaven. For sure, bread. Uh, get it out of your house and then you're not allowed to eat anything with leaven for seven days. Okay, so it's not going to kill you. If you've never done it before, I challenge you to do it. It's unto the Lord. And uh, it's a great way, a way of learning how to deny yourself. And it's just for a blessing. You'll be blessed by the Lord. <clears throat> Actually, let me read this from Leviticus chapter 23. Um, from verse 4. These are the feasts, remember, no poet of the Lord, even holy convocations, which you shall proclaim in their seasons. Verse 5, in the fourteenth day of, of the first month at evening is the Lord's festival. And on the fifteenth day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. So we go from uh, Passover, Feast of Unleavened Bread, Pesach, Hag HaMatzah, uh, seven days you must eat unleavened bread, okay? Verse 7 in Leviticus 23, the first day shall be a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work therein. Verse 8, but you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days, and the seventh day is a holy convocation. You shall do no servile work. Verse 9, and the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When you come into the land which I give unto you, and you shall reap the harvest thereof, then you shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. Okay, and that is the festival of first fruits. Okay, that is Leviticus chapter 23. Now, that is the third. Now we know that the, the Lamb, the Lamb of God, is Jesus. That was fulfilled. We know that He is also one without blemish. Okay, one without sin, with no leaven, so we know that Hal HaBikudim, I'm sorry, Hal HaMatzah has been fulfilled, okay, by Yeshua also. Now the festival of first fruits, we know that the Lord gave his best, okay, he gave his best, and we can confirm that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20, it says, now, but now is Christ risen from the dead, and become the first fruits of them that slept. So we know that Yeshua fulfilled the festival of first fruits. We can confirm that with 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 20. I'm going to read it again in case you missed it. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Okay, uh, well, just, you can read 21 and 22 if you like. Okay, um, verse, uh, then verse 
11 and, the, and, the, and he shall, uh, Leviticus chapter 23 verse 11, and he shall wave the sheath before the Lord to be accepted for you on the morrow after the Sabbath, for he shall wave it. 12, and you shall offer, the, offer that day when you, you wave the sheaf of a lamb without blemish in the first year of the burnt offering, as we talked about. <coughs> Verse 13, and the meat offering thereof shall be two tenths deals of fine flour mingled with oil, an offering made by fire unto the Lord for a sweet savor, and the drink offering thereof shall be of wine, the fourth part of a hen. 14, and you shall eat neither bread nor parched corn nor green ears until the selfsame day that you have brought an offering unto God. It shall be a statute forever throughout your generations in all your dwellings. Okay, that's the Hamats. And, uh, verse, now to verse 15, and you shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath, from that that you shall be brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths so shall you be complete. Now we're going into the next festival. So we've completed three festivals. Uh, uh, Passover, Pesach, Hag HaMatzah, the festival of the bread, and Hag HaTepikulim, okay, the resurrection of Jesus Christ as the first fruits, the first fruits, festival of first fruits. Now the next festival, okay, is going to be the festival of weeks, okay? In Mount Sinai, that's what he says, count seven Sabbaths. Seven times seven is 49, and it'll be the 50th day. You may know it as Pentecost, okay? the uh, festival of weeks, Shavuot. We'll get into that, of course, a little bit uh, before 50 days from now. Whew. Okay, good. So let's just talk a little bit about some of these, we have the Zoroa, which is the lamb, of course, the matzah is the uh, is unleavened bread, the carpus, the carpus is the, as we can use the parsley, if you're going to do the festival at your house, you usually get a parsley, with the, dip it into some salted water, okay, it represents the tears of the, of the, of, of the slaves. You can put it in there and taste it, the bitterness, the, okay? <clears throat> How the parsley uh, represents the, the lowly origins of God's people as slaves. And it's prophetic from, from us. You know, in the, at the beginning of the Bible, it says, And the evening and the morning were one day. So it starts in darkness and then it comes to the light. They started as slaves, okay, and then they became a powerful people. We start in darkness before we come to the Lord. It all works together. It's prophetic how, how he brought us out of, and the word Seder is order, out of this, use this order to come out of bondage, our own personal bondages. Yeah, we're not stuck in Egypt, but we can be stuck in so many in, uh, other things, our own bondages. Excuse me. Now again, the marar, where am I? Marar is bitterness. We know that uh, they can use uh, horseradish, romaine lettuce, also with that. Better uh, uh, on the on the plate. Okay, like I said last week, you know, you can't do anything wrong. Okay, but these are just representations. You want to teach your children whether you have them or not. The bitterness that comes through. <laughs> we have the Haraset and the and the Hazaret. I put them both there because I don't usually use the Betza as the A because it has too many connotations to 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 Easter. But uh, we'll get to that in a second. But the Haraset is used okay to represent the mortar where they, they took out the straw and it, they made it tougher to, to build, put the, the buildings together, to put the bricks together. Now the hard set is made out of uh, apples, walnuts, nutmeg, and cinnamon. And some people squeeze some orange, orange in there. And I gotta tell you, it's very tasty. So you, I'm sure you can look up, but just crunch up with some uh, apples in a blender or a fruit processor, a little nutmeg, a little 
little, uh, uh, what did I say, walnuts, crunch up some walnuts, some nutmeg, and some cinnamon, and it is very tasty, actually. It may be the best part of the uh, Passover meal. Uh, yeah, I mean, not better than lamb. <clears throat> and it also sweet. Represents even though you're in bondage, God still has his hand on you. God's sweetness, God's mercy, God's compassion. Now the apples, so we've talked about this before in other classes, uh, the women would hide in the apple orchards to give birth. Because they were killing, you know, obviously, uh, their children. So the women would hide in the apple orchards. And uh, the children, uh, as you remember, we talked about the, the burning bush before. Now, if it was burning, all of the Lord's people were not being consumed. So the Lord was still allowing them to, to give birth. Because they were truly the apple, apple of his eye. And uh, that would be here the Hazaret. Uh, that's here the Chazaret. So usually romaine lettuce. You can put again horseradish. You can make a little sandwich of it if you like, but that goes around the thing. The Crusader plate. Now, I don't usually use betza, which is the egg. And it's, it's usually a burnt egg. Sukkot is when the Lord comes 
back to dwell with us. The Lamb of God will come back and dwell with us. And uh, actually, let me read, uh, I don't know if I read it the other day, but I'll read it again, in case I haven't. I'm going to read Psalm 22. Did I read this yet? So let me read Psalm 22. This is what Yeshua said on the cross at the beginning of it. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why are thou so far from helping me? And from the words of my roaring. Verse 2. Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou, but thou hearest not. And in the night season, and am let silent. Silent. Verse 3. But thou art holy, O thou, that inhabitest the praises of Israel. For our fathers trusted in thee, they trusted and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despised of the people. All they that see me laugh. They laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip, they shake their heads, saying, He trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him, let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. 9. But thou art he that took me out of the womb, thou didst make me hope, when I was upon my mother's breast. 10. I was cast upon thee from the womb, thou art my God from my mother's belly. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Many bulls have compassed me, Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round. They gap upon me with their mouths as a ravening and roaring lion. 14. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. 15. My strength is dried up like potsherd, and my tongue cleaveth to my jaws. And thou hast brought me into the dust of death. For dogs have compassed me, compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me, they pierced my hands and my feet. I may tell all my bones, they look and stare upon me. 18. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. 19. But be not thou far from me, O Lord, O my strength haste thee to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword and my darling from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. You that fear the Lord, praise him, all of the seed of Jacob. Glorify him and fear him, all you the seed of Israel. For he hath not despised nor abhorred, abhorred the affliction of the afflicted, neither hath he hid his face from him. But when he cried unto him, he heard, My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. 27. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord, and all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nations. All they that be fat upon earth shall eat and worship. All they that go down to the dust shall bow, shall bow before him, and none can keep alive his own soul. 30. A seed shall serve him, it shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. And 31. Then shall come and shall declare, they shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born, and he hath done this. Now obviously you see uh, 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 allowances to Jesus as the piercing of the hands, piercing of the feet, taking his garments and they're playing lots to get his garments. He was despised. 
everything that was describing Jesus. Now, it's been said that the Jews reject that because if he was really a Jew, he would have been saying the Shema on the cross. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. They didn't understand, or they didn't want to understand, that he was God. He was the fulfillment of Psalm 22. We'll speak on uh, Jesus in Passover and how. Let's see. Let's say how Jesus is Passover next class and hopefully break some uh, religiosity that's been taught for many many years next class. <laughs>